Hello, I'm Claire Snowden-Darling, the founder of Balance Wellness and the College of Functional Wellness. And I'm going to talk to you today about having a baby in lockdown. May is, I can't say this very well, Maternal Mental Health Week. <laughs> maternal he Mental Health Week in May. And there's a huge amount in the news at the moment about women struggling with the mental health aspect of having a baby during the pandemic because the main issue that they're experiencing is a lot of isolation, a lot of fear, and a lot of lack of information where they're not having the touch points with their doctors and health visitors. So women are having to face scans, appointments, and giving birth often alone, um, or their partners are only allowed in for a short part of it. And I can't imagine anything more terrifying it was actually only in December 2020, so we've gone for nearly a whole year during that pandemic where women were actually allowed someone with them during labour. The partners still weren't allowed to visit them on the maternity ward and help the new mums, many of whom had had caesareans and needed the support physically as well as emotionally. So this really touched me because my story is that I had horrendous birth trauma and I you know, had it not been at the time for my ex-husband and my mother who were both with me in the room, I, I honestly don't know how I would have got through it. I was taken down for an emergency cesarean where my, my husband was allowed to be. But then even in recovery, um, I couldn't hold my baby. And then when I was actually in the maternity ward, I couldn't physically lift her to then start to feed her. So I needed a huge amount of support that there aren't enough nurses and midwives to have been able to give me. And then even the day after when I was going to have to have a shower, you know, I needed someone to prop me up when I was going for that shower. So I can't imagine how challenging this must be. I've got a few clients who have had um, grandchildren in lockdown and, you know, they're not being able to go and support their, their daughters when they've had a baby really challenging and these you know these young women are you know overwhelmed it's so overwhelming having a baby isn't it and we really need as much support as we can get and so they're not having that I can imagine hugely hugely uh, impactful on mental health issues so part of the issue that we're also seeing when it comes to mental health not only the fear the isolation the lack of support we also have to look at diet, which is where one of my passion areas lies. And diets have been worse generally for a lot of people during lockdown. There has been a big increase in takeaways. Uh, you know, the, the chocolate uh, industry has had a 40 million pound boom over lockdown. So if we're eating more sugar, more takeaways, we are going to be impacting our mental health. So it's incredibly important. We know it's important to eat a balanced diet in pregnancy. But the other issue there is, of course, if you know we're in that first trimester feeling awful or that third trimester feeling awful, we often go for convenience. So it's really, really important to make sure that we're not going for convenience at this time. So postnatal depression is very often a deficiency in pretty much everything. So firstly, it's too much stress hormone in the body. That's and the underlying hormonal reason why it happens. Uh, but it's often a deficiency in a lot of minerals, as well as a massive drop in all the hormones that have been building through pregnancy. So we have to make sure that we aren't allowing that to happen. We also need to think about the health of the child because ADHD is often a lack of nutrients and caused by stress in the mother. So researchers now believe that the nine months in utero determines our health expression for the rest of our lives, which obviously, you know, no pressure than mothers. <laughs> and our thyroid plays a huge and important role in breastfeeding and our thyroid requires an awful lot of nutrients to make sure that it's up and you know, running perfectly. In fact, hypothyroidism, which is you know, uh, endemic in our country, uh, is caused because there isn't enough iodine in our food because our soils have been depleted. So we need to be supporting our body nutritionally at this time. Morning sickness is actually uh, blood sugar instability and a deficiency in zinc and B6. So 
50% of mothers go into pregnancy being deficient in vitamin D. And a study in the UK showed that 32% of babies were born with vitamin D levels of zero. So they had no detectable vitamin D levels in their blood at all. So that is coming because of the mother's deficiency in vitamin D and the fact that vitamin D is deficient in her diet. So we absolutely have to make sure that we are, are ch changing that when we're pregnant to give ourselves the chance of coming out of pregnancy, not having the baby blues. The baby blues are kind of quite normal, but not having something as difficult to navigate as postnatal depression. I mean, my postnatal depression took three years to go away. So mental health is hugely connected to diet. There's an awful lot of studies that now show that, um, that the bacteria in our gut give off something called endotoxins in response to starchy carbohydrates. Uh, and so if we don't want these endotoxins, endotoxins are linked to higher levels of depression and suicidal thoughts. So we need to make sure that we don't have those refined carbohydrates causing those increase in endotoxins. So we have to eat balanced. And so that, that eating balance looks like eating proteins from meat, fish, eggs, or tofu or vegan protein powders. That's our only protein sources. Things like kale, quinoa have protein in them, but not enough to class as a protein source. Um, and things like cheese has pro cheese and nuts have protein in them, but not enough as a protein source. Uh, so we need to make sure proteins, um, fats, good fats, and the right carbohydrates at every meal. So good fats would be things like cheese, nuts, avocado, uh, and uh, seeds, tahini, good old fashioned bone stock. Um, yeah, those are good fats. And we need to have those in abundance in our diet. So then we need to go talk about the right carbohydrates. So the right carbohydrates would be all of our green leafy veg. That's very, very good for estrogen control, metabolizing. And then we do need starchy carbohydrates, especially in pregnancy. But we choose a starchy carbohydrate. So our starchy carbohydrates are grains and beans, our legumes, our root veg and fruit. So have that, have one per meal. This is how we're gonna balance our blood sugars. And so that's gonna help with morning sickness. It's also gonna, by having that spread of food, we're gonna make sure we're gonna get the right nutrients in our diet. Excuse me a moment. someone making a racket in the other room so I just want to ask them to be quiet so bear with me oh I don't know how to mute myself Karen yeah. could you do me a favor and ask Natalie to keep the noise down because I'm doing a talk thank you <laughs> <laughs> Not people doing a workshop next door um so According to the Guardian, let's get back on track. So that's how we eat right. And that is going to, that's one of the ways that I work with mental health is obviously there's an emotional connection, but we really, really haven't talked enough about the dietary connection with mental health, I don't think, um, as a society. So according to the Guardian, and this is really quite terrifying, six out of seven new mothers in England are not getting a checkup of their health six weeks after the birth of their child. That's, that's since the pandemic. So we're not getting a six week health checkup. Apparently just 15% of women who've recently had a child are having a dedicated consultation with a GP to discuss their physical and mental health. And that's not okay. We need to be checking out these new mums. Apparently the requirement to have that was introduced last year. I mean, I, I think I remember having that, a six week checkup, not just for the baby, but the requirement was introduced last year as an, an actual essential uh, thing to make sure that men maternal mental health was, was being looked after and to try and identify women having psychological issues. But these appointments are supposed to be separate to the established week, six week uh, uh, baby checkup. However, 85% of the 893 mothers uh, who were surveyed said that their appointment was only about the baby's health. So that is probably where a lot of this is coming from is that women aren't being asked the questions. 
So this is really horrendous. And it's also then made worse by the fact that women are having smaller support networks right now because of the pandemic. So we do need to act upon it. So part of, I thought I'd turn that off as well. It's all happening today, isn't it? It's all happening. So I also think that there's an issue because I know for me, I was having health visitors, of course, health visitors haven't really been allowed into people's houses very much, but I was having health visitors. But at that time, I really struggled with saying I wasn't okay. It was not part of the culture of my family to admit that we weren't okay, and especially not to a stranger. And I certainly didn't see the same health visitor or midwife. And I don't think many people do. So admitting that I wasn't okay would have been, you know, worse than death. So I didn't say that I wasn't okay. So these checks, even if women are being asked, if they have any of the kind of conditioning and belief structures that I had, they won't be ad admitting this stuff. So that I do think that it's really important to have a call for finding different ways to support women with this maternal mental health. So I wanted to give some tips on how to navigate all of this stuff. And the first is, being really gentle on ourselves. You know, our housework can wait. There's enough pressure when we've just had a baby or even when we've got a young child to do everything and to be perfect. I think one of the big issues that I've seen and have heard is about the conflicting information that's being given from different doctors, different midwives. And it's very confusing. And of course, the big fear that women have is about doing something wrong, you know, for this child. But what all of this advice has done is stop us from trusting our own instincts. And as hard as it is to become a new mum, it is the most natural thing in the world. So it's too easy to get bogged down in the what they say and what the latest research is and actually just stop being autonomous and trusting ourselves. And that is incredibly important. I'm a big fan of getting women to prepare to batch cook you know do it the old-fashioned way cook the first six weeks worth of food and store it all in your freezer and you know make sure that you are you've got stuff that you can just stick in a microwave or just reheat so that you are fed properly um, in that first six weeks and I also really recommend supplementing with magnesium zinc b vitamins chromium and omega all are safe in pregnancy and during breastfeeding if you feel overwhelmed, please ask for help. And like I, I know it's really hard sometimes to ask for help, but my refusal to admit that I couldn't cope is what took depression and turned it into PTSD. So that's what, you know, des desperately wanting to avoid. The depression was bad enough. The PTSD then, you know, my depression lasted three years. The PTSD went on for another five years. So my daughter was nine, really, by the time I'd started to get, or actually probably even 10, by the time I'd started to really get over the PTSD associated with my birth trauma. I'm a massive fan, like I said, of preparing to go into pregnancy and getting our hormones really sorted and stable. So if you're thinking about getting pregnant, you are pregnant or you've just had a baby, check out our symptom assessor, uh, www.symptomassessor.co.uk. And it will tell you which hormone pathway you need to focus on. And we have an online group um, if you buy the toolkits to go with that um, hormone pathway. And we can advise on what supplements not to take in pregnancy. But all the ones I've just listed are completely safe. Um, so we can advise on that. And also learning how to trust yourself. This is so important. And so uh, for this, we recommend our Reclaim Your Life Online program, which is a 12 hour course, which really is about this whole, how do I tune into myself? How do I learn to listen to myself? And how do I, you know, how can I support myself through this, this mental health crisis and, and know how to get back on track? And again, there's a community in there. But stuff like, uh, on this 50% off that uh, Reclaim Your Life for Liberty members, but stuff like the Liberty Lounge, really essential. Just tell somebody that you are struggling and ask for help. Um, and that, that really is how I recommend getting through um, uh, any of the mental health issues associated with maternity mental health month um but uh any questions please comment below and i will be checking in the lounge and yeah if there's any support that i can offer then please don't hesitate to ask thank you